actually one thing I want to do before I uh, really go any farther is just check the power on these wires so be careful if you do this make sure that none of these open exposed wires touch I'm just going to check them with the voltmeter this is a four cell battery so I'm getting it's fully charged so 16.71 is what it's sitting at right now I'll plug that in and actually you know I think I'll use a smoke stopper for this so my home built smoke stopper and then we'll plug it in with that just in case okay and then I'm gonna test these so this one right here should be pack voltage this is going to the uh, VBAT on the flight controller 1663 this one is 12 volt and that's going to be powering the camera and going to the LC filter regulated 12.03 and then this is regulated 5 volts and that'll be powering the flight controller 5.27 okay so we're good as long as I get those soldered on properly we'll be in good shape start with the uh, control board here today and I put a, a two pin jumper on there because this board does not have a button and then all I need to do this will be exposed out the side of the quad and then I can just put my little jumper on there if I can get it lined up Oop, turn it around the right way and uh, slip that on and then I can connect to uh, change the firmware or upgrade or update and then take it back off I do have these two pins they'll be sticking out the side but so far so good I haven't had any problems with that and actually from what I understand depending on what you're running I'll be running Betaflight 3.0 and with Betaflight 3.0 you don't even need to do this anymore I'm doing it just for the fact that I don't want to have to get back in there for any reason, depending on what uh, what I'm going to run. But you can just type a command in the CLI to enter the boot mode nowadays on Betaflight 3.0, which is awesome. But for those who are interested, I figured I'd show you this. Now what I'm going to do is just uh, lay the board out, and then I'm going to tin all of the points that I will be soldering to and then that way I can uh, get this thing put soldered up and put on the on the quad now some of the boots on, or some of the pads on this particular flight controller are very very tiny like right here I have my plus and minus for the buzzer RSSI I won't be using RSSI um, very small and tiny and my VBAT goes over here so I'll get that soldered up and then uh, we'll come back and I'll I'll solder all of the wires to it here's the bottom of the board all soldered up and I made this kind of difficult because I have real short wires maybe a little bit too short especially too short to uh, try to get this soldered and do it on video but here's my buzzer this is the uh, positive and negative 5 volts to power the board coming off of the power distribution board over here I have the VBAT which is full battery voltage wires that I put on the uh, power distribution board and then of course I have my four ESC wires in uh, slots one through four and hopefully in the right sequence we'll check everything before I button this up but uh, and then I topped everything with hot glue which is what I like to do because these direct solder are very tiny and these are tiny brittle wires so you don't want vibrations to knock that loose and have to 
come back in and fix it. So this will get flipped over and all the wires tucked underneath and then on, a, on the top I'll be connecting my S bus and then uh, one of these for um, actually over here by my thumb UART number two for uh, telemetry. So leave yourself a little more wire than I did and it won't be quite as difficult but it's pretty fine intricate soldering and some small wires to deal with there. Uh, it'll it'll up your soldering game if you do a few of these. Okay I'm going to show you how I, I'm going to hook up my receiver wire. This is just the way I like to do it. I already have the lead wires pre-tinned and uh, cut to specific lengths so that they'll go right on here. So hopefully I can do this without getting my hands in the video. But we'll see. So I'm going to start with the ground which is on the outside of the board. Get a little bit of solder here. And then the power in the middle, or next. And then finally the signal on the inside. So now what I'll do is put some hot glue on there and then I have that set up so that I can put a bend in it and then connect my receiver to the back just so that it doesn't pull on those connections. It's actually the stress will be on the, on the uh, hot glue. Okay we got this receiver connected. One wire coming over here to uh, UART number two for my telemetry from the smart port. And uh, as I normally do, a little dab of hot glue there and a little dab of hot glue on that connection. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. Just to keep that connected. And then these have hot glue on them as well. So this will stick down on the back and then I'll probably throw one small zip tie on there for the receiver and then what I like to do before I actually put the uh, control board on there permanently or at the end of the process of setting it up is I'll cut off of a piece of silicone tubing some little rubber dampening washers get that to focus so I just take an exacto knife and they don't have to be perfect but I'll cut four of them about an eighth of an inch thick and then uh, there's three of them there's my last one and then I'll take those and place them over the top of the plastic standoffs now this particular receiver or uh, control board has the 6050 so it's not as susceptible to uh, it's not as good as a 6000 but to vibrations but I think anytime that you can eliminate vibrations from your processor you're going to be in better shape so I'll put those underneath the four corners and then set the control board on top make sure I have it facing the right direction put my four plastic nuts on there 
and then I uh, put a dab of hot glue on each one of those just to make sure they stay put. Now this kit comes with this carbon fiber plate that's designed to go on top of your control controller but I'm going to leave it off. For one with these pins and this USB and all over here it won't fit. Two I don't think it's necessary. I'm not I'm not needing it for anything so I'm just going to leave it off. So let me get that done and once I finish hot gluing those four corners there then all of that basically will be pretty well set. Strap down my receiver and find a place to uh, strap down my buzzer. I usually just hot glue it to the frame. I'll probably just tuck it in here and hot glue it right there or something with a big daub of hot glue and just set that down in there. That way it's easy to remove if I need to. And uh, that'll conclude this portion. The next step is going to be uh, setting up the video. So I think that's going to be uh, number four this series. So until then, take care.